Lexington police are working off of a vehicle description as they try and find the driver responsible for killing a pedestrian in an early morning hit and run crash. Lexington Road was closed earlier today while a hazmat crew checked out reports of suspicious barrels. We'll tell you what was inside. And a Boyle County woman accused of killing her three-year-old step-granddaughter was sentenced today. How long she'll spend in prison. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening, Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting. We now know the name of the man who was killed overnight in a hit and run in Lexington. That hit and run happened just before one this morning at the intersection of North Broadway and New Circle Road. The Fayette County Coroner's Office tells us the victim is 21-year-old Jonathan Adams. Our Hillary Thornton has more on the continuing investigation. It's our top story at 5:30. This was the scene around 1 o'clock Tuesday morning along North Broadway near the intersection of New Circle Road. It is there where police say 21 year old Jonathan Adams was hit by a vehicle while he was walking. He later died at UK Hospital. Looking for a red Chevy Impala, uh, possibly with an Anderson County tag, and also with some possible damage to either the driver's side or passenger side mirror. While investigators do have this vehicle description, they are still asking that anyone with any bit of information come share that with them. We're following up with a couple of witnesses that we've, that we've identified, uh, confirming what they, what they saw last night. Uh, we're still desperately asking for the public to come out and give us any information they may have. Again, even the smallest piece may be uh, the piece we need to piece everything together and, and put us where we need to be. Unfortunately, at this point, police say they do not have a license plate number to go along with that description, something they say could be a great help. Anybody sees a car like that or knows of a car like that, or even if they were in the area last night and observed a car like that, please contact us and let us know. Uh, jot down a, a vehicle tag or something and give it to us if, if they feel that it fits that description. In Lexington, Larry Thornton, WKYT. And if you know anything, sending anonymous tips to Lexington Police, including photos and videos, is very easy. You can start your message with LexPD, send it to Crimes or 274637, and you could get a reward for your information. Lexington hazmat crews were called to Blue Sky Parkway off of Athens Boonesboro Road around 11 this morning after suspicious barrels wrapped in plastic were found in some bushes. Lexington police said they closed down both directions of the road while crews investigated what was inside those barrels. It turns out they were filled with diesel fuel and had been illegally dumped. Police say the road was shut down for about an hour and a half. Today, a judge sentenced a central Kentucky woman who killed her three-year-old step-granddaughter. Shiloh Raley pled guilty to second-degree manslaughter for the 2014 death of Alex Raley. This afternoon, Shiloh Raley found out her punishment. WKYT's Monique Blair has more on what her attorney had to say about the sentence. Three-year-old Alexa Raley died in June 2014. Almost six months later, her step-grandmother, Shiloh Raley, was charged with her murder. According to police, the toddler died from blunt force trauma to her abdomen. Now fast forward almost two years later. Today, Shiloh Raley was sentenced to five years in prison. Just about a month ago, Raley pleaded guilty to a lesser charge, second degree manslaughter. The agreement that she made with the Commonwealth was that she would accept a sentence in jail uh, without having to admit that she did something that she didn't do. And as a result, she saved the family and everybody who's been touched by this tragedy a lot of pain and heartache that would have come from going through a trial. So Raley's attorney, Marcus Carey, maintains that his client did not kill her step granddaughter. Carey says his client took the plea to avoid a trial. I think the one thing that people need to know about this case is that Shiloh Raley is A, not guilty of murder, B, did nothing to harm this child and remained faithful to her Christian beliefs throughout and never once did anything that would be inconsistent with that. We spoke with Alexa Raley's mother a month ago when Shyla Raley pleaded guilty to second degree manslaughter. She told us all she wanted was a guilty plea. In reality, I think that she's done something uh, that is just and right and consistent with her faith and is probably um, the only bright spot out of a very, very, very dark case otherwise. In Boyle County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Rayleigh was sentenced to five years in prison, but she will get credit for the time she has already served. 
Their search started months ago, and now a family knows what happened to their loved one. William Scotty Fannin went missing last December in Martin County. Yesterday, police confirmed human remains found last week belonged to Fannin. For weeks, his family searched a nearby lake in the hills near his home, fearing the worst. It made it real. It's, uh, it's been... Uh... It's been a long, it's almost 10 months. Scotty would have been gone 10 months this month. Bring him home. We wanted a, a place for we could have him a proper funeral and, and bury him. The family now says their, fir their focus turns to how he died. Police are still investigating to find out exactly what happened. Police say the state medical examiner's office is still running tests to determine the cause of death. A Kentucky man is in jail accused of killing a woman in southern Kentucky. Ethan Reed is charged with the murder of 20-year-old Kayla Hodges. The Allen County Sheriff's Office says Hodges was shot last night while on the front porch of a home. She died at the hospital. Reed was also taken to the hospital before being taken to jail. Two LaRue County parents are in jail after police say they found the couple's five children living in filth. Christopher Atkins and Christy Jordan were arrested in Hodgenville. Police say their house was full of roaches, toilets were unfit to use, and there was animal feces on the floors. Both Atkins and Jordan are charged with five counts for endangering the welfare of a minor. NDSB has approved its report about a crash in Chattanooga that killed six people. Investigators say that crash was likely caused by fatigue and the use of meth by the truck driver who did not slow down in time in a construction zone. That driver, Benjamin Brewer, is from London, Kentucky. He's being held on a half a million dollars bond while awaiting trial in Chattanooga. While the hurricane is prompting evacuation to the south of us, we are enjoying some great weather here. A beautiful day out there, Amber. But, of course, change is on the way here in the bluegrass. Let's check in with a man who knows, Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Chris? Yeah, those changes show up as we get closer to the weekend, but we're kind of stuck in this awesome pattern for a couple more days before we do blow up some changes. Upper 70s to around 80, showing up into most of central and eastern Kentucky right now as we continue to see each and every passing day. When you look at the trees, a little more and more of those gorgeous fall colors. Defender radar network calm, fairly clean throughout the region, but we are indeed picking up on the possibility for a shower or a thunderstorm that is out there. That's going to continue to be the trend as we make our way into the evening upon us. Uh, heading out tomorrow, how about temperatures that will be topping out right around 80 degrees yet again? It's another mild day across central and eastern Kentucky, and that mild weather is likely to carry us right in through the end of the week. So a nice little mild pattern, Sam, to begin the month of October. Beautiful out there. I'm joining Chris here in the Weather Center because our good question is about the weather. So I came mm -hmm. to the expert. Yeah. Chris, with the warm temperatures this week in October, specifically yesterday, today, and tomorrow, sure. does this qualify as an Indian summer? I got some video here uh -huh. that I shot on my bike. A little shaky, excuse that. This yeah. is on Huffman Mill Pike in Fayette County. Nice. And as you can see, still a lot of green out oh, there in yeah. the landscape. Yeah. But, you know, the leaves are going to be changing mm -hmm. fast. So I guess I'm wondering, can we call this an Indian summer because of the warm temperatures? You cannot because Indian summer technically occurs after you get the first frost. And we have not had the first frost as of yet. So this is, yes, a warm spell, but it does not qualify as what uh, the... Old timers would tell us Indian summer actually is. Now we have a chance of picking up on a little patchy frost over the next week or so, and we get another mild spell similar to this, Sam. After that first frost, right. we could call it Indian summer then. So this is a pre Indian summer. It, maybe. That's right. It's a tease to Indian summers to come. I got you. Thank you, my man. To submit a good question, send an email to goodquestion at wkyt.com. Louisville Slugger Field will host next spring's Atlantic Coast Conference Baseball Tournament. It is the first time the city and Kentucky will host that event. The ACC announced the relocation of several conference championships today. The decision follows its recent move to withdraw events from North Carolina over a state law limiting protections for LGBT people. The baseball tournament will be played in May at the home of the Class AAA Bats with the University of Louisville as the host school. Charter Communications has accused Louisville of favoring their competitors. We'll have more on the lawsuit ahead. I'm Bill Bryant. A planned televised U.S. Senate debate is canceled after one candidate decides not to take part. And this year's only vice presidential debate is tonight, rekindling some memories at Center College. The bottom line is ahead. I'm in Lexington where the caregiver for a special needs child has been charged with criminal abuse. 
Coming up at 6 on WKYT, we'll show you the video that led to her arrest. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. A debate between U.S. Senate candidates has been canceled after Rand Paul declines to debate Jim Gray. And the stage is set on the campus of Longwood University in Virginia today for the first and only vice presidential debate of the campaign season. WKYT's Bill Bryant has the bottom line. Good evening. The League of Women Voters of Kentucky has canceled a U.S. Senate debate that had been set for October 30th at the University of Kentucky between Senator Rand Paul and his challenger, Lexington Mayor Jim Gray. It comes after Gray accepted, but Paul declined the invitation to take part in the debate. WKYT and WLKY in Louisville were planning to team up with other stations to carry it statewide. The U.K. Student Government Association was helping organize it. Paul's campaign has agreed to appear on Kentucky Educational Television's Kentucky Tonight program on Halloween evening. In 2010, Paul first ran for the U.S. Senate, and he took part in five debates. Gray's campaign criticized Paul for declining to do the debate at U.K., accusing the incumbent of ducking joint appearances. We're just over three hours away from the only vice presidential debate of this year's wild race for the White House. It's between two politicians from Kentucky border states. Donald Trump's running mate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence and the Democratic VP candidate is Virginia U.S. Senator Tim Kaine, who is running with Hillary Clinton. The debate airs live at 9 o'clock tonight here on WKYT, and there'll be a watch party at the U.K. Gatton College of Business and Economics with some guest speakers from both sides. That starts at 7. Four years ago, Center College was the center of attention for hosting the 2012 VP debate. Vice President Joe Biden and now House Speaker Paul Ryan debated in Danville. College officials say Center got lots of national attention and interest from students from all over after the debate. Center also hosted the vice presidential debate in 2000. The Kentucky League of Cities holding its annual conference and expo in Lexington this week. City leaders from all over the state are talking about community issues. This year's KLC president, Williamsburg Mayor Roddy Harrison, will be passing the baton to Sadieville Mayor Claude Christensen. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Louisville's largest cable and internet provider is suing the city for giving other companies what it says is an unfair advantage. The Courier Journal reports that Charter Communications filed the federal lawsuit Friday, saying the city's franchise agreements violate the company's constitutional rights by allowing competitors Google and AT&T to operate under different rules while offering similar services. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Yeah, putting the wraps on a very nice Tuesday across the region. We're stuck in a pattern that features some very nice conditions. Had it yesterday for the most part, today, tomorrow, and right on through the rest of the week. Then the weekend rolls around, and it seems to be over the past three weeks. Every time you get to the weekend, change blows on in. Beautiful skies out there right now with temperatures upper 70s to around 80 degrees. And overall, we're going to continue this great weather for the next few days. So 79, 80 degrees, and we'll drop it as the uh, sun gets low on the horizon. Obviously, it's sunset getting earlier and earlier. You know what that means? Winter not too far away. Defender Radar Network, a little bit of cloud cover showing up, but nothing to really get too excited about, though we were driving on 64 a little earlier today, and we found a couple of sprinkles on the car windshield right around lunchtime. And that's a pattern that can throw one or two showers at us tomorrow. Now, if you're out this evening, yeah, no shower action. We'll drop it from the 70s into the mid-60s by 11 o'clock. Very, very nice evening. So if maybe you're running a little behind on getting a walk in this evening, you still have some very mild temperatures even after the sun sets. Over the next three days, not a, ho not a whole lot to write home about. I've got no threat because I can't call a shower a threat. But there is a smallest possibility for a shower or a thunderstorm coming up tomorrow and into Thursday. More dry than anything else. Though, let's look at this new hour by hour forecast. Start you out this evening with 70s. That'll quickly drop through the 60s into the 50s to begin tomorrow. And you know the drill. Each and every morning, we've been waking up to what? A little fog, especially the valleys and the waterways. But look at this. There's that juice. Just enough low level moisture to squeeze out an isolated shower at some point on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we get to do it all over again. 
50s to start, maybe a mix of sun and clouds, upper 70s to low 80s. Smallest threat for an isolated shower thunderstorm. Most areas will stay dry, and we go into Friday morning. Notice a little cloud cover increasing on the east. Some of those clouds may be indirectly coming from this Hurricane Matthew, Category 4 storm right now, eastern tip of Cuba, heading into the Bahamas. It's going to head toward Florida. Does it get to the coast? Before it turns toward the Carolinas, we'll fine tune that as we get closer, but that cone of uncertainty is showing the swath. Here's one computer model forecast hot off the presses. And I'm not focusing so much on this for the overall track of our storm, but I'm focusing on the moisture out ahead of this. Watch what happens with this. Here we go into Friday morning. Notice how it has some moisture into the mountains of East Tennessee and parts of West Virginia. As our hurricane on this model heads toward the Myrtle Beach area, it is throwing some juice out ahead of it now into eastern Kentucky on Friday night. There's also something called the Ensembles, different model runs of various models that are all thrown into the mix there. And they're also showing the hint of a little rain indirectly coming from our tropical system as we go into Friday night and early Saturday. So that's something we'll keep a very close eye on over the course of the next few days. Because that's ahead of a cold front. That's really the big playmaker for the weekend in terms of the weather. That'll lock us down into the upper 50s, low 60s on Sunday. Gusty winds are going to be a big player as well over the next few days. Don't be surprised if we don't get in on some wind gusts greater than 30 miles per hour Thursday, Friday, and into the weekend. Saturday sounds interesting for a football day. Yeah, it does. It's going to be windy. Showers, I'm more confident on the temperature drop than in the rain chances okay. out at Commonwealth Stadium right now. So we've got a few days to play. We can work with yep, that. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Well, police have cleared the crash on South Lime at Con Terrace, so have all lanes open on South Lime. And the earlier problem we were showing on Winchester Road just past the interstate has been cleared as well. So to our drive times right now, Nicholasville still less than 15 minutes. Uh, and no unusual traffic uh, delays headed to Paris, except police officers are running radar on Paris Pike near the Fayette Bourbon County line. So be careful if you head that way later. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Don. Just ahead, we'll check in with the EKU Colonels. Eastern is back home Saturday against SEMO. The Colonels reflecting on a tough loss over the weekend, and every team is different. That will be true of the Cats this coming season. Cal talks about just how it will be different next on WDKYT. John Calipari heading into his eighth season now as the coach at Kentucky, and he should have one of his best teams. Every team is different. That will be the case again this year as Cal brings in another top-ranked recruiting class. In a preseason interview last week, Calipari says the group that has come on board is faster than last year. The one thing you'll see, this team will play faster because they're really fast. So I think that's one thing with this group of freshmen. All of them, including the big guys, are fast. Um, I think that the guards are, will be a little bit bigger, um, you know, overall when you look at our guard play. Um, but uh, hopefully they're going to say, man, this is a great defensive team. They can really pick up and guard the ball. Kentucky football has a chance this weekend to climb back to 500 on the year as Vanderbilt comes into town. Coach Mark Stoops said he'd like to see his team play with a greater sense of urgency, but he said overall he was pleased with how his guys competed against number one ranked Alabama over the weekend. And over the last two weeks, the defense has been night and day as his younger players get better and better. There's no doubt. There's no doubt that, you know, we'll get better with every rep, with uh, every Every practice that we have, every game, you know, they're getting better. And, uh, you know, fundamentally and understanding the structure of the defense, and we're not beating ourselves as much. And it'll be Vandy and, e and Kentucky, a 4 o'clock kickoff, Commonwealth Stadium. You will be able to see it on the SEC Network Saturday. EKU opened OVC play with an overtime loss at Tennessee Tech over the weekend. Quarterback Benny Coney passed for a program record 464 yards. And the Colonel defense recorded six sacks. But Tennessee Tech made the big play in overtime to win. Mark Elder thought his team did a lot of good things. Unfortunately, it wasn't high enough. It wasn't high enough to get the victory. Um, but I think that our guys, we showed the film. We showed the good. And we showed the bad. And, and we saw both, and, and our guys, are, they're realistic guys. They, they get it. Um, 
they saw, hey, we, we did some really good things, but in these critical situations, we didn't. We didn't do good things at all in some critical situations. And coming up in the next half hour, we will continue our Wildcat previews with freshman Bam Adebayo. Should be one of the most exciting players the Wildcats will have this season, the young big man. Stay with us. We're back after the break.